Assalamu alaikum wa Allah, my name is John Fontaine. Welcome back to another episode of Judaism and Christianity in the Light of Islam. Today we are going to be discussing the differences between the Islamic perspective and the Christian Jewish perspective of a prophet and a messenger. Now, within the Islamic tradition, we have detailed knowledge regarding the prophets and messengers. Allah revealed the Qur'an to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam 1400 years ago. And this message of the Qur'an has been preserved for 1400 years, which was a complete guidance, a complete guidance for the whole of humanity on how to live our lives and what we must believe in. Within this guidance, within the Qur'an and the Sunnah, Allah has explained to us many different things about the people of the past, such as the previous prophets, Allah has told us about previous prophets such as Adam and Prophet Noah and Abraham and uh, Moses and Dawood and Suleiman and Isa and Yahya and Zachariah etc. SubhanAllah, Allah has mentioned about many of the uh, previous prophets. Allah tells us in a, in a hadith, the Prophet wasallam told us that there were over 124,000 prophets sent to humanity over the, the whole period from the time of Adam all the way through to the time of the final prophet, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah sent 124,000 prophets to every single tribe and every single nation. SubhanAllah, if you imagine people all over the world, as far as China and Americas and all the different tribes and nations, people have received a prophet and messenger throughout time at some point or another. Of course, in this day and age, the prophet is Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And of course, Prophet Muhammad is the only prophet out of these 124,000 who has come to the whole of humanity. SubhanAllah, the other prophets and messengers came to specific tribes and specific nations. That's not to say that they were not giving dawah outside of their nation. For example, uh, Musa alayhi salam, he came to the children of Israel, but he also gave dawah to Firaun. Anyone who was not a part of the children of Israel was still open to hear the message of Islam, but specifically he was sent to the, the children of Israel. So subhanAllah, from the Islamic perspective, the Arabic, in Arabic, the word Nabi or the word Prophet is derived from the word Naba, which means a, a message. So uh, under Islam, a Nabi is someone who receives a message, someone who receives a message, specifically when we're speaking in the context of Islam and revelation, we're talking about a message from God, some sort of prophecy, some sort of revelation, which has been given to the Nabi. Also within Arabic, a Rasul or a messenger uh, is someone who receives, subhanAllah, an actual message, who receives the message from God and who is ordered to can now convey that message um, to, to, uh, to the people. SubhanAllah, this is why many of the scholars have the opinion regarding when the Prophet wasallam, when he first received the first revelation uh, of the Qur'an, which um, you know, which, which which told him to recite in the name of his Lord when it when it gave the first portion of revelation on the mountain. Subhanallah, many of the scholars of the opinion that this is what made the Prophet peace be upon him a Nabi. It wasn't until the second revelation where Allah tells him to stand and warn and, and tell the people about what he has been given, when many of the scholars now believe that this is when he became a Rasul, a messenger, someone who now has the responsibility to call people um, to the religion. So out of the 124,000 prophets, 
um, it stated that 315 of these prophets were actually messengers, people who were given a new revelation. Amongst the scholars, some of the scholars have said that a messenger, I every Rasul is a Nabi, but not every Nabi is a Rasul. So basically every messenger is a prophet, but not every prophet is a messenger. What this means is that many prophets were given revelation, but they were not messengers. They were not people who were, who were ordered or um, they had the responsibility uh, necessarily of receiving a new book, a new revelation, a new Sharia. So when we look at the, at the Quran, it describes Musa as a, as a Rasul. He, was, he received the Torah. Of course, Isa, Dawood, they received revelation. They received a new book. And also the Prophet wasallam. he received the Qur'an, which is uh, the final revelation. Now out of these 124,000 Prophets, Allah has chosen to name 25 of these Prophets by name within the Qur'an. And subhanAllah, in, in uh, some of the one ayah in uh, the Qur'an, verse 6, uh, sorry, chapter 6, verse 83 to 89, Allah mentions many of these prophets, subhanAllah. He says, And what was our conclusive argument which we gave Abraham amongst the people? We raise by degrees whom we will. Basically, he chooses uh, who's to be a prophet. Indeed, your Lord is wise and knowing. And we gave to Abraham, Isaac and, and Jacob, uh, Jacob. All of them we, gu we guided. And Noah we guided before, and among his descendants, David, and Suleiman, and, and Job, and Joseph, and Moses, and Ar Har Aaron, meaning Harun. Thus do we reward the doers of good. And Zachariah, and John, and Jesus, and Elias, John being Yahya, my name is John, alhamdulillah. <laughs> and all were of the righteous. And Ismail and Elisha, El Elisha and Jonah and Lot and all of them were preferred over the worlds and some among their fathers and their descendants and their brothers and we chose them and we guided them to a straight path. That is the guidance of Allah by which he guides whomever he wills of his servants. But if they had associated others with, other, others with Allah then worthless for them would be whatever they were doing. Those are the ones to whom we gave the scripture and authority and prophethood. But if the disbelievers deny it, then we are entrusted it to a people who are not therein believers. SubhanAllah, in this ayah, Allah mentions many of the prophets and messengers that he chose uh, in order to deliver his message to the people. Among the 124,000 prophets, there are actually four of these prophets were Arabs. In an authentic hadith of the Prophet wasallam, he says that among them were four from among the Arabs. And the four prophets from among the Arabs are Hud, Saleh, Shwaib, and the Prophet Muhammad wasallam. So there were four Arab prophets which were sent uh, during this period of uh, when, the, when, when the prophets were sent. Aside from the 25 prophets mentioned by name in the Qur'an, the Qur'an also mentions some other prophets without mentioning their names. Allah, in other different ayah, He speaks about prophets who were sent without mentioning their names. And this is from the wisdom of, wisdom of Allah, subhanAllah. Some of the scholars have actually spoken about why maybe Allah chose to name some prophets over others. But it's quite interesting uh, as a reflection to think that within the Bible, and we've already discussed the reality of the Bible, subhanAllah, the Bible sometimes speaks badly about the prophets. Now we have to remember that the Bible is not from, from Allah. Okay, We're not saying the Torah of the Zabon in Jeel speaks bad about the prophets. No, the Torah of the Zabon in Jeel is revelation. But the Bible, which is authored by people, unfortunately has been so corrupted that some people have actually spoken bad and ill of the prophets and the messengers. So one of the wisdoms may be as a reflection of why Allah actually chose to name certain prophets is to defend them, subhanAllah. When we look at the Bible and how uh, uh, some of the people have actually uh, 
you know, spoken bad, bad about the prophets and accused them of evil crimes, we find that subhanAllah, uh, often Allah actually speaks of these prophets within the Qur'an and he clarifies the correct belief in these prophets and clarifies that they, these were not prophets who did evil things or committed sins, etc. SubhanAllah, there's, there's a lot of um, uh, uh, points when we're coming to the Islamic perspective of prophets and messengers. As we've mentioned, a prophet is someone who receives a, a revelation, a messenger has been given a new scripture, a new guidance, a new sharia, a new law, which is now the people are expected to follow uh, this new revelation. What's interesting ag again is from the Islamic perspective, we say that Jesus is a prophet of God and in fact many Christians actually get upset about this. Many Christians think that Muslims are somehow degrading Jesus or putting Jesus down or making him low and this isn't the case. What we must understand is under the Islamic perspective of prophets and messengers, these are the best human beings that have ever lived, the best example to humanity. We don't believe that prophets did evil things, we don't believe that prophets did evil crimes. See, in English, when we use the word sin, it is such a big and general term. You know, we, we say that, uh, you know, people say that, so when we say that the prophets may have made mistakes, such as Adam, peace be upon him, he forgot and he approached the tree. You know, such as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he, one time he was giving dawah and a Muslim came and wanted his time. And, you know, that and Allah corrected the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. A few times Allah corrected him in the Qur'an. Why? Because the Prophet is a human being. He, he made mistakes. But the difference is that we believe the Prophets didn't have an evil intention. They didn't have evil near. Okay? So, of course, m they may have wronged in certain areas, but they were not, they didn't have evil intentions. And this is very important. Because when it comes to the revelation, when it comes to Islamic topics, the prophets never erred. They never made mistakes. They were protected from these mistakes. So it's very important that people realize, especially Christians, that when we're saying Jesus is a prophet, in fact, we're bringing all the prophets up to the level of an Islamic prophet. Because under Christianity, their understanding of prophets is that they sin. They do evil crimes, subhanAllah. For instance, in some of the... Uh, uh, descriptions they've described uh, Lutz as, as, as doing evil things some of the prophets as drinking alcohol and different things they've accused the prophets of evil things and we reject this the Quran corrects them on these points and clarifies that the prophets are the best examples to humanity and this is the belief that we have and we call people to that so a Christian mustn't think that we're degrading Jesus by saying he's a prophet. In fact, we believe that all the prophets are at a certain level of infallibility, especially when it comes to the, the areas of religion. That's all for today. I would like you to join me next time for another episode of uh, Judaism and Christianity under the light of Islam. Join me next time. Assalamu alaikum wa barakatuh.